Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, uh, Canada. It's Saturday morning, January the 30th, 2021. Glad you could join me today. And uh, we're continuing on in our book in James, reflecting on the, the Word of God in James. And um, today I'd like to r- focus my attention on a small passage, uh, James chapter 4 verses 13 to 17. So this is what James says. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we'll go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. So when you take a look at that passage, James is pretty pointed and and how he's speaking to the church in this letter. You know, myself, when I look at that, I, I can't help but think about my, my career as a police officer. Prior to becoming a pastor, I was a policeman. And as a pastor, I do people's funerals, and I'm there when people die. And I've seen my share of death, um, probably more than most people, uh, up close and very personal. Um, too many deaths for me to recall and count, actually. Uh, Most deaths in the hospital rooms where chronic illnesses are uh, taking people um, and it's a long time coming. Those kind of deaths, I've not had much experience dealing with a lot of that. But uh, my my experience in dealing with death is uh, as a first responder. And um, the majority of deaths that I witnessed have been sudden deaths, like, without any kind of warning at all. Um, from people falling out of trees to accidentally shooting themselves in a hunting accident to fatal heart attacks to suicides to car accidents um, to internal bleeding to drug overdoses or even worse, sometimes murders. Um, you know, when you see this much death, you kind of get a picture with how unexpected it it happens. Um, It it brings it close to home. The reality is that death can come to any one of us at any time for any reason. As uh, both pastor and police officer, the suddenness of death coming on individuals um, is kind of surreal, actually. It takes you off guard every time. Uh, It can be surprising how quickly death comes and and how easily each one of us could see it happen to us. Like, I, I know we don't often like to think about it as people, you know, like in the natural. Most people don't like to think about it. Um, but one thing is for certain, 100% of us, outside of those that are raptured in the final trumpet call, when the saints are collected from the earth, all of us are going to meet the grave if we don't see the rapture in our lifetime. Our lives are certainly, as what James describes, a mist that appears for a while and then vanishes. And you think about our accomplishments, I think about my own personal accomplishments and about the possessions that we gather and all of this fades away um, and amounts to kind of like what I picture, you know, and I've seen this before in places where I've dealt with death, is uh, you look on the mantle or you look in a box or whatever and you see an old bowling trophy. Well, that bowling trophy was won because of a great game that person played in their life or whatnot, but uh, it really comes to nothing in the end. Um, Well, even consider heroes of the past. Um, People who do great things, they're soon forgotten. Uh, It's a sobering reality, and and it's kind of uncomfortable to look at. But it's the truth. You know, like, for instance, okay, if I was to ask you who had won the 1955 Stanley Cup, 
And then maybe, you know, if you were a sports uh, nut and you had all that kind of uh, trivia knowledge, you might be able to, you know, tell me the team. But I, I'd venture to say, unless you're Googling it, you know, you probably couldn't tell me the players on that team. You know, the hard work that went into those people getting to where they were and, and the joy and the, and the sheer ecstatic excitement of the championship, you know, all that stuff, you know, I, we probably couldn't even name the MVP of the, of the series, you know, like those are the kind of things. It fades away. The glory of men fades. Um, Peter says in First Peter chapter 124, he says this, for all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord stands forever. You see, James agrees that some of the people he was writing to were being overconfident about their ability to control the future of the endeavors that they planned. He gives believers a sober reminder that we just don't know the day or the hour that our life will be um, over in this body. Therefore, I think it is right for us to have the correct perspective on the reality of things as they are. I think as believers, rather than being overconfident about going here, going there, and doing this and doing that, it's very appropriate to say, yeah, well, this is my thoughts. If the Lord wills it, I mean, that's the right attitude. You know, God is asking us, I think, through the Scriptures to ask Him. He's asking us to consider asking Him the following questions. God, what would you have me to do today? What would you have to me, me to do in the moment, in Right now, how would you like me to live? Where would you want me to go, Lord? Um, how would you like me to act, Jesus, if I, I'm in this scenario right now? And how, how would you like me to act? You see, it's true that you know we can have a good name and it can be remembered for a little while. But when you think about it, what is the only thing that we can take into eternity with us? The only thing, really, that we can take over to the other side into eternity is our relationship with God and our relationship that we build with other people who come to know Jesus. And uh, those are the two investments that will never fade away. So when we go out and we share the gospel with people, we're, we're working to see heaven expanded or I guess the, the kingdom of heaven, expanded. Because God's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So when you breathe your last, don't breathe your last with regrets. Breathe your last knowing that you have been faithful to God's calling to you. And it doesn't mean that everybody's an evangelist and that we're going to have strengths in every area. But take time to invest in what's really eternally important. Support the kingdom of God any way you can with all the resources that you have. See, it's, it doesn't matter what boat you have, what car you have, what house you have, what job you have, how many, how many investments you have. You know, it, that, that stuff is just going to go to someone else. What really matters is what you take with you to the other side in the kingdom of God. Every one of us has got a calling. James is reminding us, folks, we've only got a limited amount of time. We're just like the grass in the field, the flowers that fade. But one thing is for certain, our eternity is forever. And uh, should we not store up treasures for ourselves in eternity, treasures in other people? because they're the only ones that are coming with us and the only thing from the earth that's coming with us. This is Food for Thought.